the card is ready. Okay. Ah, it's Sister Zhang. I'll go let her in. Okay. Come in. Hurry. Okay. You all ready? Yeah. Maybe we should wait till the rain stops. With the rain, no one will be out. It's safe. She's right. Mm -hmm. acting up. Forget it. Let's go. Here? It's cold. You've been working all night. Have some dinner, then go to bed. Okay. Brother Lin. Hello. What is it? Census takers are at my sister's village. So they'll be here soon. They're not really taking census. They're just searching people's homes. They're even searching barns and chicken coops. Liu, one of the census takers, said the government is using it to root out believers. Then we have to hide Sister Zhang. Mom, look around this place. Where could we hide her? I might have an idea. It's so cold out. Will you be okay? <laughs> I'll be fine. It's better than prison. People hunted by the CCP have nowhere to go. <sighs> Give it to me. Hey. Hmm? They're coming soon. If the church doesn't really need you, don't go anywhere. Hide here for a few days. I can't do that. The new believers need watering. I have to meet with them. I'll leave before it's dawn, and I'll be back after dark. Okay. Mm-hmm.
The great red dragon persecutes God and is the enemy of God. And so in this land, those who believe in God are thus humiliated and oppressed. Because it is embarked upon in a land that opposes God, all of God's work faces tremendous obstacles. And accomplishing many of his words takes time. Thus, people are refined as a result of God's words, which is also part of suffering. It is tremendously difficult for God to carry out his work in the land of the great red dragon. But it is through this difficulty that God does one stage of his work, making manifest his wisdom and his wondrous deeds, and using this opportunity to make this group of people complete. You should know that the testimony to my defeat of Satan lies within the loyalty and obedience of man, as does the testimony to my complete conquest of man. The duty of your faith in me is to bear witness to me, to be loyal to me and none other, and to be obedient to the end. Catch my breath. <sighs> We've only walked a couple of miles, and you need a rest? Yeah, I do. I can't keep up with you. You've been sleeping in a cold haystack for a week. There's no way I could do that. <laughs> you care too much about your flesh and haven't really suffered anything. How can you do your duty well without suffering for it? <sighs> you first. Attention villagers! Attention villagers! The government has announced that if anyone sees a stranger illegally preaching or holding gatherings, they must inform the village committee immediately. Inform the village committee immediately. Hey, Mr. Lee. I hear Mrs. Shen, who lives by you, is a believer. Did you know? Haven't strangers been visiting her house lately, huh? I've got nothing to do with whoever visits them. I'm just answering the government's call. There's a reward for reporting believers. For reporting a church leader, you get 5,000 yuan. 5,000! They're not doing anyone harm. If we reported them and got them sent to jail, we'd destroy their family. We'd be the ones doing them harm. What goes around comes around. Are you some kind of bloodhound for the CCP? If you need something to do, go feed some pigs. Better than dirtying your hands with that money. That's right. Well, that's stupid. That money's up for grabs, and you're all too stubborn to take it.
Christ of the last days brings life and brings the enduring and everlasting way of truth. This truth is the path by which man gains life, and it is the only path by which man shall know God and be approved by God. If you do not seek the way of life provided by Christ of the last days, then you shall never gain the approval of Jesus and shall never be qualified to enter the gate of the kingdom of heaven. Huh? Someone reported an illegal gathering. What gathering? Search the place. There's no one here, sir. No one here either, sir. You're back again? You should go to the hospital. No, it's not that bad. I just need a patch. With your back issues, you must rest more. She's right. Yeah, but I can't let it interfere with my duty. Are you all okay? We're fine. The police are gone, but their informants are still around. You'd best wait till dark. It'll be safer. Okay. okay. I'll go take a look around. Be careful. Sit down. Every time we gather, we're in danger. When will it all end? By having us suffer through all of these trials, God wants us to learn a lesson. A lesson? You think? What kind of a lesson? Right. Without the CCP persecuting us all, would we be able to see Satan's demonic face? Would we understand why the world is so evil and dark? No. If we can't see through Satan, we'll be deceived by the CCP just like the unbelievers are and blindly follow it. Then how would we forsake Satan and submit to God? She's absolutely right. Yeah. Being arrested and persecuted allows us to see how evil and cruel the CCP is, to see it's the devil Satan. It allows us to see that only God can save us that only Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. Then we have faith to follow God and walk the right path. Isn't that a blessing from God? It is. it is. Through this persecution of ours, we still gather and do our duty. They hunt us and we're always in danger, but God always protects us and uses his words to guide us so our faith in him grows stronger. These trials and tribulations temper our very will and give us the grit to endure suffering. We see how lovely God is, and we are able to love God and bear witness. And so we reap a harvest. Yes, yes. 
Can we receive God's blessings when everything is safe and comfortable? No. no. The Bible says, the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Before, we lived for fleshly comforts and enjoyed God's grace and blessings, but we gained nothing in the end. Now we're experiencing God's work of the last days, and God is arranging so many trials for us to undergo. We've learned some truths and gained something. God truly loves us. He does. God cleanses and perfects us through these many trials and tribulations. His work is so practical. Thanks, Thanks, be, to Thanks be to God. Have you seen what work God will accomplish in this group of people? Rely on God more and work with Him. His guidance will be revealed. Thank God. It's so good to experience such a circumstance. Ready? Mm hmm. Are you all right? Your back's getting worse and worse. You should go to the hospital. Take oh, it easy. Take it easy. You have a herniated disc in segments four and five. It doesn't look good. Is it serious? Yes, very. We have to take care of it right away. We'll start conservatively and see. Sleep on a firm bed. No heavy lifting and don't exhaust yourself. Avoid damp or cold places. If it gets worse and compresses your nerves, you could become paralyzed. Didn't the doctor say there are other treatments? Stop crying, honey. While people are undergoing trials, it is normal for them to be weak or to have negativity within them, or to lack clarity on God's will or their path for practice. But in any case, you must have faith in God's work and not deny God, just like Job. Although Job was weak and cursed the day of his own birth, he did not deny that all things in human life were bestowed by Jehovah, and that Jehovah can also take them all away. No matter how he was tested, he maintained this belief. In your experience, no matter what refinement you undergo through God's words, what God requires of mankind, in brief, is their faith and their love for Him. What He perfects by working in this way is people's faith, love, and aspirations. God does the work of perfection on people, and they cannot see it, cannot feel it, under such circumstances, your faith is required. People's faith is required when something cannot be seen by the naked eye. 
and your faith is required when you cannot let go of your own notions. When you do not have clarity about God's work, what is required of you is to have faith and to take a firm stance and stand witness. When Job reached this point, God appeared to him and spoke to him. That is, it is only from within your faith that you will be able to see God. And when you have faith, God will perfect you. Without faith, he cannot do this. Hello, Sister Lou. Is my sister back? She's inside. What did the doctor say? Well, the doctor said... Hi. Hi, Zhengya. Hey. Any better? Mm-hmm. Much better. Have you got the patch on? Not at the moment. What do you think of what the doctor said about your back? I never thought it was something I had to even think about. I would just put on some patches. I thought God would protect me as I was expending myself for him. I never thought it could be so serious. What the doctor said scared me quite a bit. What if I end up paralyzed, immobile? How will I do my duty then? I've been praying, asking God for the last two days to protect and heal me. I've also been reading God's words, and now I understand his will. God is testing me, and he is perfecting my faith as well as my devotion. Thanks be to God. Hey, let me. When Job went through his own trials, he lost all his wealth and boils covered his body. He was in such pain, but he never complained at all. Instead, he praised God's name. That's real testimony. Hmm. I've expended myself for God and been persecuted by the CCP, and God has led me through it all. This suffering is nothing, and I should still stand witness for God. Hmm. Your faith is so strong, I admire you. Why can't I undergo trials and refinement? Is my stature too small? <laughs> God decides when things happen. If you truly believe in him, he'll test you soon enough. God uses illness to test and perfect us. It's God's love. Yes, thank God. Thank God. Let's go put a patch on your back. I got you. Hey, why don't you rest for a little longer at least? You can do your duty when you're better. Yes. Resting for a day or two won't make a difference. No heavy lifting or anything strenuous at gatherings. I'm getting regular treatment. It'll get better soon. I can't let this little trouble get in the way of my duty. <sighs> How about you take the two gathering places near home? I'll go to the other places with the deacons. Okay. okay. Mm hmm See you soon. Let's go. Take care. Be careful on the steps. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Just a little more. Mm. Just relax. <sighs> it's best to get this treatment without interruption. Otherwise, it won't work as well. Mm. Mm. Don't exhaust yourself and make sure you get lots of rest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, doctor. My pleasure. Your fellowship was enlightening. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Any more questions? No. no. Great. Then let's call it a day. Okay. okay. I'll go keep an eye out. Thanks. You okay? Uh, I'm fine. Just been sitting too long. Don't worry. Take care. I've got to run. See you. Goodbye, Lin Lin. What's wrong with Lin Lin? She seems unhappy. She's always playing games on her phone, so I yelled at her this morning. Your mom yelled at you, huh? What's on your mind? You can tell me. I know that games aren't good. They get in the way of reading God's words. I just really like playing them. How can I stop my bad habit once and for all? Hmm. Tell me then, does playing games help you to receive the truth from your faith? I get so wrapped up in them, I spend all my time just playing them. Hmm. Playing video games is meaningless. But I... I can't change. What can I do? We can't change ourselves. We have to rely on God. Keep praying to God. Ask Him to help. When you feel guilty every time you play a video game, pray to God so He can help you get rid of this bad habit. But... I have prayed, and it didn't help. You have to do more than just go through the motions and say some words. You must pray with your heart, and pray to God earnestly and sincerely. Pray a few times, and you'll see what God can do. And will you submit if God disciplines you? Yes, I will. I won't complain at all. Mm -hmm. That's good. If you rely on God with all your heart, I'm sure you'll succeed. Mm. Have some tea. Thank you. Lin Lin, we should have faith in what sister tells us. You all right? Mom, I'll take her to the hospital. Be careful out there. We will. Be careful. <sighs> Feeling better? Mm -hmm. A little. Mrs. Wong, you have an appointment too? Just here to pick up medicine. How's your back? Any better? I just had treatment, so a little. Hey, can I ask you something? So, how's your daughter, Zheng Min? She hasn't been great the last couple days. She said she was obsessed with status and focused only on being well-liked. She got replaced for doing her duty poorly. She thinks she can't be saved anymore, so she's feeling down. I'll go see her this afternoon. Thank you. Hmm. I'd best be going. Thanks. Goodbye. They live miles away. What about your back? It'll be okay. 
I've been reading God's words and I feel a bit better. Everything God does is righteous. I wasn't a good fit, so I got replaced. No matter what your condition or your problems, as long as you pray to God and read His words, you'll understand His will and not misunderstand Him. Yes. Thanks. Look at me, sister. Three years ago, I was a church leader, but I got replaced too because I desired status and was a show-off and walked the path of an antichrist. I felt miserable after I had been replaced. I reflected on myself and saw how arrogant I'd been. I had so many wild desires in my duty. I wanted everyone to look up to me and idolize me, and I only preached to show off. I was resisting God and competing with Him for people. Sure. I did many bad things and offended God's disposition. I wondered if God would save me. I just didn't understand God back then. But then, I read God's words and understood that He was disciplining me to get me to wake up and repent. Hmm. This was God saving me. Yes. I read some of God's words that were really helpful then. Let's read them now. Okay. Great. In his life, if man wishes to be cleansed and achieve changes in his disposition, if he wishes to live out a life of meaning and fulfill his duty as a creature, he must accept God's chastisement and judgment, not allow God's discipline and smiting to depart. In order that he may free himself from the manipulation and influence of Satan and live in the light of God. Know that God's chastisement and judgment is the light and the light of man's salvation, and that there is no better blessing, grace, or protection for man. Man lives under the influence of Satan and exists in the flesh. If he is not cleansed and does not receive God's protection, then man will become ever more depraved. If he wishes to love God, then he must be cleansed and saved. Amen. 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 Ah, thanks be to God. I was so moved when I read this back then. If God hadn't disciplined me and replaced me in that duty, I would have remained too arrogant to ever reflect on myself, much less see the danger that I was in. I would have kept pursuing status and walking the path of an antichrist. God would have eliminated me in the end. Yes. God's judgment and refinement are the best protection for us. They are the truest love. Your fellowship has made me feel much better. And I think you're right. If I hadn't been replaced, I wouldn't be reflecting on or getting to know myself. Mm -hmm. I truly feel God's love. Thanks be to God. Why are you back so late? We were talking. Hurry inside. Okay. Careful. I'll give you a hot compress in a bit. You should eat something. You should leave for the hospital soon. Uh-huh. Brother Jean, I ran into him just now. He said Elder Son learned about him and his wife looking into God's new work and went to harass them. <sighs> he didn't look so good. 
should go see him right away. Maybe I should skip the hospital today. But what about your back? It's fine. One day won't make a difference. Fine. I'll go with you. Okay. Let's eat first. Yeah. Almighty God's words tell us very clearly why God comes in the last days. To express the truth and do his work of judgment. Let's read them now. Okay. Mm, I'm fine. Though Jesus did much work among man, he only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering. He did not rid man of all his corrupt disposition. Fully saving man from the influence of Satan not only required Jesus to become the sin offering and bear the sins of man, but it also required God to do even greater work to rid man completely of his satanically corrupted disposition. The Lord Jesus just performed redemption. Your back is bad. Be careful. Slowly. Careful now. Your back. It's getting worse. The treatment isn't working. You'll need an operation as soon as possible. Otherwise, you really will become paralyzed. Will the operation work? I can't make any promises, but we'll do our best. What if I really do become paralyzed? Is my life over? You're dead set on believing in God? I want a divorce. I wash my hands of whatever you believe. You can go to heaven and I'll go to hell.
Who's your church leader? Huh? Where's all the church's money hidden? Huh? Give her another beating! With your back issues, you must rest more. She's right. Yeah, but I can't let it interfere with my duty. I've suffered so much expending myself for God. Why won't he heal me? Slowly. Here. Those who face trials are those with stature. God tests people only to perfect them. You expend yourself for God. You are a church leader. I think this trial really is God blessing you. My stature is small. I often feel weak. Through all this trial, sometimes I even complain and blame God. I'm so ashamed. Trials test us, make us weak. But with God's love and blessings, you'll make it through. Hmm. I have to read God's words more and seek the truth. Mm hmm Help me up, please. So many believe in me, only that I might heal them. So many believe in me, only that I might use my powers to drive unclean spirits out from their bodies. And so many believe in me, simply that they might receive peace and joy from me. So many believe in me, only to demand from me greater material wealth. So many believe in me just to spend this life in peace and to be safe and sound in the world to come. So many believe in me to avoid the suffering of hell and to receive the blessings of heaven. So many believe in me only for temporary comfort, yet do not seek to gain anything in the world to come. When I brought down my fury upon man and seized all the joy and peace he once possessed, man became doubtful. When I gave unto man the suffering of hell and reclaimed the blessings of heaven. Man's shame turned into anger. When man asked me to heal him, I paid him no heed and felt abhorrence toward him. Man departed from me to instead seek the way of evil medicine and sorcery. When I took away all that man had demanded from me, everyone disappeared without a trace. Thus, I say that man 
has faith in me because I give too much grace and because there is far too much to gain. Man's relationship with God is merely one of naked self-interest and is one between a receiver and a giver of blessings. To put it plainly, it is akin to the relationship between employee and employer. The employee works only to receive the rewards bestowed by the employer. There is no affection in such a relationship, only transaction. There is no loving or being loved, only charity and mercy. There is no understanding, only suppressed indignation and deception. There is no intimacy, only an uncrossable chasm. Here, put your back brace on first. Just a little more. Uh, careful. <laughs> you okay? Yes. Do you feel any better? A little. Please sit. You're so busy, but you've still come. I owe God so much. I read a passage of God's words yesterday. There was one line where God says, so many believe in me only that I might heal them. This describes me exactly. I'm so ashamed. How could I ever face God again? God is using this illness to test me and all my corruptions are fully exposed. I never betrayed God when I was in prison. So I never thought when this condition got bad. I would misunderstand and blame God and think. I've expended myself for God all this time, so why isn't it better? If I become paralyzed, won't I just be a cripple? How will I possibly survive then? Who will look after me? These thoughts left me in a dark, painful place. Yes. <sighs> Over the last few days, after I read God's words and also prayed, I've realized my expending for God was tainted. I've been suffering only to get blessings. I've been making deals with God. God loves us so very much. How could I ask him for anything in return? I'm so selfish and awful. I complained and blamed God when all this happened. That's not true obedience at all. Mm-hmm, right. This injury has totally exposed me. What a wonderful trial it is. It's truly God's love. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. Be to God. By passing through God's judgment, we can truly be cleansed of our corruptions. God works in such practical ways. Mm. Hey, there's a nice passage that sums this up wonderfully. Let's all read it. 
Okay. In their belief in God, what people seek is to obtain blessings for the future. This is their goal in their faith. All people have this intent and hope. But the corruption in their nature must be resolved through trials. In whichever aspects you are not purified, these are the aspects in which you must be refined. This is God's arrangement. God creates an environment for you, forcing you to be refined there so that you know your own corruption. Ultimately, you reach a point at which you would rather die and give up your schemes and desires and submit to God's sovereignty and arrangement. Therefore, if people do not have several years of refinement, if they do not endure a certain amount of suffering, they will not be able to rid themselves of the bondage of corruption of the flesh in their thoughts and in their hearts. In whichever aspects you are still subject to Satan's bondage, and in whichever aspects you still have your own desires and your own demands, these are the aspects in which you should suffer. Only through suffering can lessons be learned, which means being able to gain truth and understand God's will. In fact, many truths are understood by experiencing painful trials. Nobody can comprehend God's will, recognize God's almightiness and wisdom, or appreciate God's righteous disposition when in a comfortable and easy environment or when circumstances are favorable. That would be impossible. Amen. 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 <sighs> Thanks be to God. Thank God. <sighs> if I hadn't been tested and refined through this illness, I'd never have known my faith was tainted or that I was motivated by blessings. Mm -hmm. Yes. <sighs> now I appreciate how meaningful it is to be judged, tried, and refined. Thanks be to God. I have to start living up to God's will, whether my back gets better or not. I'll always submit to God's rule and His plan. I'll seek to love God and obey Him every day I have left. Any suffering is worth it to love God and satisfy Him. It all has meaning. Amen. Amen. Even if I'm paralyzed, I'll still seek to love and satisfy God and shame Satan. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. No matter how much we suffer through our trials, if we can truly repent and change, then this is God's blessing. Sister Zhang, you're so blessed. You've prayed to God through your pain, and you've kept reading His words and received His guidance. And now you've gained joy and peace and shown true praise for God. You're on the path to full salvation and being perfected by God. I truly thank God for it. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Thanks be to God. You're so, so very blessed to test and refine you like this in order to perfect you. God loves you. I'm so jealous of you. <laughs> what is God going to bless me like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. You're still such a little kid at heart. <laughs> the Lord said, except you be converted and be as children, you, you shall, shall not, not enter, enter the, the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. heaven. Right. Uh -huh. Children are innocent and honest. Their love for God is pure, and God takes great joy in them. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Thanks be to God. Yes, thanks be to God.